About two-thirds of the world's foods are made of endosperm, a tissue that nourishes seeds. The endosperm acts much like a placenta in humans. Researchers, including Whitehead Institute member Mary Gehring, are interested in the forces that influence gene expression in endosperm. The work is part of a broader effort to develop hardier crops that can withstand climate change. In many plant species, a batch of eggs from the mother can be fertilized by multiple fathers. It's often in the mother's best interest to equally distribute her resources between offspring, placing a bed that seeds from at least one father will survive. But each father plant has a better chance of continuing his genetic line if his seed saps as much nutrients as possible. New work from the Gehring Lab shines light on how mother and father plants balance their competing interests. Using the model plant Arabidopsis taliana, researchers focused on RNA polymerase 4, a protein that controls gene expression by producing small RNAs, which can silence genes. Researchers bred normal plants with mutants missing a copy of the protein, so that offspring contained only a single copy of polymerase from either their mother or father. Results showed that RNA polymerase 4 had distinct effects on gene expression, depending on whether it was inherited from the mother or father. Gehring proposes that opposing forces in gene expression hold up an evolutionary stalemate, balancing the interests of both parents. Minor injuries like a cut on the finger are often no problem for our bodies. But when a serious injury occurs, missing body parts are gone forever. Whitehead Institute member Peter Radin's lab studies an animal that can regrow new body parts. This regeneration superstar is the planarian, a tiny water-dwelling flatworm. In new work, the Radin lab reveals a previously undescribed gene named Equinox that is necessary for the transition from initial wound healing to regeneration in planarians. Equinox activates in the wound epidermis, skin that grows to cover a wound. It's turned on by a previously studied gene named BMP4. Without Equinox, regeneration halts at an early phase. Continued research into regeneration may contribute to better therapies for serious injuries. Researchers from around the world, including Whitehead Institute, finished sequencing the complete human genome in 2003. Now, two decades later, researchers and Whitehead Institute member Jonathan Weissman's lab have created the first ever map tying thousands of genes to their functions. The map would not be possible without ProturbSeq, a two-step technology co-developed by the Weissman lab and the lab of Aviv Regev. First, researchers use CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing to silence select genes across many cells. Single-cell RNA sequencing reveals how silencing certain genes leads to changes in RNA production. Because RNA controls all aspects of how cells behave, this method can help decode how individual genes affect the cell. The data is available online, so researchers anywhere can use the map to explore gene function. In type 2 diabetes, cells may have trouble responding to insulin, which is a key step in converting food into energy. Sometimes the body produces more insulin to compensate. But as insulin levels ratchet up, the pancreas wears out. The Yanish lab has developed a protocol to convert stem cells into mature adipose cells, or fat cells. Researchers designed a growth medium that mimics levels of insulin and glucose found in the body. By exposing the cells to diabetic levels of insulin for a few days, the researchers could desensitize cells to the hormone, imitating insulin resistance in the human body. This new and improved model may help researchers pinpoint specific changes in insulin-resistant cells, uncovering mechanisms underlying diabetes. Even when researchers can identify a gene associated with a disease, they do not necessarily reveal the mechanisms that cause symptoms. Researchers and Whitehead Institute member Richard Young's lab have turned their attention to condensates, a particular phenomenon in cells that is implicated in health and disease. Condensates are droplets in the cell formed by molecules loosely meshing together. These droplets help organize where molecules in cells are located. Disruption of condensate formation may be a mechanism of many diseases. To explore this idea, researchers combined a database of mutations associated with the disease with information on proteins thought to form condensates. 
Through cross-referencing, the researchers created a catalog of genes implicated in disease and also likely to impact the formation of condensates. Researchers identified condensate-disrupting mutations linked to over 1,700 diseases, including 550 cancers. The catalog is meant to be a springboard for future research into how particular diseases unfold and function.